This video covers question six, part C of the 2022 AP Calculus AB free response section, no calculator allowed portion. So what we've got going on here on this piece is they want us to find the position function for the Q particle. And so what we do on this is this is what's called an initial value problem. The first thing we want to remind ourselves of, again, is this physics relationship that we keep talking about on these problems. So if we've got an original function, which is our position function, then the first derivative of position is equal to velocity. And so in here, what we find is that we are starting on this problem with the velocity function for our Q particle. And so we're starting at this level right here. And what we want to do is we need to get back up a level. We need to move up a level to get back to that original position function. And this is where you would want to use an integral. This is where we're going to be doing an antiderivative. We're going to undo the derivative to get back to that original function. So we'll start there, and then why we call it an initial value problem is because they give us a point that is on that original position function. So this is the original position function for Q here, and we'll use that, pos that original point right there to find that plus C value that comes out whenever we do an indefinite integral. So to start this, we will start by taking the antiderivative of our velocity equation here. We're going to undo our derivative to get back to that original equation. So I start here. Remember that before you rush in to take an antiderivative or an integral, a derivative, you always need to be on the lookout for a handful of rewrites, a couple of algebraic rewrites that we always want to look out for. And on this one, we're looking at the situation where we have a number over x to a power. And so the rewrite on this is we want to bring that x up from the bottom to the top and make that power negative. So if you had something like 5 over x to the third, you would want to rewrite that as 5x to the negative 3. So the first move on this problem is not going to be to take any antiderivative. We're just going to rewrite that by bringing that up from the bottom to the top. So we've got the one that was sitting up there already, and we're going to bring that t up from the bottom to the top, and we make that power negative. So that's just a rewrite only to get through to that point. And now what we want to do is we're ready to go ahead and apply the power rule. So the power rule for antiderivatives, my saying that I use is add 1 to the power, And then step two of the process is divide by the new power. So I add one to my power here. That's going to get me one t. The adding one will get me to the negative one. Divide by that new power, which is negative one. And then when we've got an indefinite integral, we always put a plus c at the end. So what we have right now is we've got the start of our original position function, our y sub q of t. And then what you're going to do now is you're going to take this initial point that they give you right here. We're going to use that point to find out what our specific plus C value is. I would go ahead and I would kind of clean this thing up a little bit to make it ready to do some algebra here. All I mean by that is the first thing I would do is I would kind of undo that rewrite. We're sort of in this position here and we want to move that back down to the bottom. And so then I would also kind of clean up the fact that negative one and one give us a negative one up on top. And then on the bottom now, undoing this rewrite, this would be t to the first. We don't need that unwritten t, uh, that unwritten one, and then our plus c right there. So this is just a, a rewrite game. I always tell people negative exponents are great for doing calculus. They are horrible for doing algebra. So as we start getting into our algebra portion of the problem, we now want to just kind of plug these pieces back where they belong. And now we'll grab that initial value. So y sub q of 1 is equal to 2. So what this is saying is when I plug in 1 for t, I need the answer to all of that math to equal 2. So y sub q of 1 is going to equal, I now plug in 1 for t. So on the bottom here, I'm going to plug in 1. That plus c all needs to equal my answer, which is 2. Working that algebra out, negative 1 divided by 1 is going to get me 1 plus negative 1, excuse me, plus c has to equal 2. And then we're just going to move this 1 over to the other side now. And we come out of there with c equals 3. And so we're almost done. We're just going to take our general solution. 
and now pop in the C value that we now know, and we'll get out our final answer, our specific solution. So we end up with negative 1 over T, and now instead of C, I'm going to plug in what I know C to be, which is 3. And that's it. There, we're done with the, this problem. That's our position function. So you're going to earn your three points on this problem by setting up your integral and then evaluating that integral to get out to this point right there. That's two points. And then we use that initial condition to find our plus C value. And popping that plus C value in at the end is going to get us our last point. So overall, this part of the problem was worth three points. Really pretty straightforward process for three points on this question, which is awesome. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.